Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Aries Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and today, together with the coordination group, we will share with you the year plan of the 2025 initiatives, webinars, and activities. So let's start. Over to you, Claire. Please lead us in alignment. Welcome, everyone. We imagine ourselves gathered together in a circle from our many different geographies and many different time zones. Our different lights coming on around the globe. We quietly withdraw our consciousness from the personality its vehicles and its distractions and relax deeply and expectantly into the presence of each other and of the group soul. We breathe in the sense of shared purpose and intention. United in Christ's love, we know ourselves as individual souls within the greater group soul, meeting in a field of lighted love and spiritual will. We affirm the presence and the radiatory love of, of the Christ with us. And we sense the love that connects us in this group, that underlies our purpose, and that is at the heart of our relationships and our work together. We extend our alignment to connect with the new group of world servers, visualizing our individual lights coming together to create a network of light surrounding the planet. All that is not light will be washed clean by light. We extend our alignment upwards to the outer edges of the great ashram, the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, connecting with the radiance of our heart center with the heart center of hierarchy, the Christ, and upwards to Shambhala where the will of God is known. Through the heart of hierarchy, we connect with the hearts of people of goodwill all around the world. Together we affirm the intentions of the 2025 initiative to create and foster a safe and vitalized space for the exchange of questions, inspiration and ideas in support of humanity and the working out of the plan. And we invoke the presence and assistance of the hierarchy and the Christ and all those beings in the subtle realms whose purpose is the increase of light and love in the world and the fostering of clarity and coherence within the group soul and within humanity. May we listen and learn with the ear of the heart. And may the will to love be our guiding light.
Thank you. I suggest we take a moment to look through the list of the names who gathered today in our circle, linking heart to heart with light and love. And as we will share together, just see ourselves being in a circle, which we are. and link in the heart center, our group heart center. Thank you for finding time to join today. And thank you for ongoing connection in this, with this circle and with many other circles. And the program that we are uh, um, sharing with you today is the result of our collective creative process. And we want to thank everyone who contributed their impressions, ideas, inspirations, and silent subjective support. From the very beginning, the 2025 initiative was an experiment, and it is an experiment of progressively unfolding space where we all together, each of us as we join every time, weave the fabric of the group space. And it's an experiment of attuning our, to our inner note, hearing that note of our soul and the note of the hierarchy that we together could play as a well-attuned orchestra, that beautiful melody of the plan that we can hear from within. Thank you. Over to you, Renee. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Just a few words about uh, the first uh, theme that we will, we will be developing. It's about recognizing the nature of the world crisis in which we are now. So, as every informed person on the planet, we are seeing that humanity is presently in a deep crisis. The whole of humanity is confronted with the raising of fanatism, fanatism, militarism, consumption, economic instability, impoverishment of the masses, and increasing concentration of money in the hands of the ultra-rich few, climate and environmental degradation, etc etc so everything in the world at all levels is becoming more tense more extreme and at the same time all the established institutions and governments that were guiding us before as well as many individuals they are challenged by these uh, developed tensions and problems like every one of us, and uh, we seem collectively to be unable to present real solutions to these problems. 
So a great part of the population uh, is in the state of shock and disorientation, often accompanied by a sense of love, loss of purpose and meaning, meaning of life. But this crisis has a good side of it. It is forcing millions of people to question the authorities, the faiths, the values, the worldviews that we had accepted in the past without questioning. And because, uh, and, we, and we challenge them because we see that these solutions, the old paradigms that guided in us in the past do not seem to work anymore and do not seem to lead us towards a sustainable and viable future. So, because of that questioning, people listen less to external authorities and begin to listen to their inner wisdom. So the crisis is bringing a part of the population to a place where they can find real answers from within their own nature. However, it's a new process for, for most of people and they are not sure that they can trust themselves and they have no method and no tools to contact their inner light. So in this crucial period, we are at a turning point where a part of humanity will begin to be more inner oriented instead of control from the outside. And they need help to to make that change. And this is the role of the group of world servers, which are all men and women of goodwill in the world, who themselves have begun this process of inner work. And so it is the, the job of these people, which are us, in fact, to bring this support to the one around us. And what is our role as the initiative group 25, 2025? So we thought that uh, through the different presenters in the webinar, we will bring many uh, speakers that will talk about this inner vision, higher vision and higher possibilities that are presenting themselves to humanity right now in order to support all of us to be able to help people in their environment. So this is the vision of the work uh, that is beginning that uh, that we have as a group thank you and so hello everyone daniela speaking and um what i want to add here is what connects the uh, with what Rene was just saying. And um, it's a sharing from my personal experience um, where um, my response or what I believe the response could be is that people should know that there is a plan. And um, I work and live, you might say, in, a, in the corporate world where I'm surrounded by engineers and uh, business-minded people who are um, not comfortable, let's say, with looking at problems they cannot solve. And um, this being uncomfortable changes into actually being afraid if they dare look at the state of the world as it is today. As Rene was saying, crisis is all over. The climate, justice system, education, health institutions, name it. The entire system seems to be uh, crumbling. And um, um, I hear my colleagues and friends around me say it's chaos and we cannot do anything about it. And um, all this intelligence and problem-solving power that they do have is thus used in a very limited way for doing business only. 
And from my perspective, it looks as if this condition could be um, untangled by, uh, let's say, simple knowledge that there is a plan. Um, not only the fears would be sorted, but also we could reorient our resources and intelligence towards helping the plan. And um, as an image, I, I, I see my colleagues as uh, uh, people who would be observing uh, a hatching egg without realizing that, uh, that the end goal of all this destruction and shell breaking is actually life finding its way out. And, um, or even uh, further, we could imagine being a baby birds um, looking at the egg from inside being broken without knowing, without being anymore just birds following their instincts and not yet being um, sufficiently informed or knowledgeable about what is going to happen once the, the shell is broken. So yeah, therefore the fear is there and um, I believe that knowing that, that there is a plan would greatly help. Like, uh, you know, a voice coming from outside the shell and saying something like, yes, this looks like chaos, that there is sense to it all, there is goal, there is plan, you are not alone. So yeah, there is a plan and it would be good that everybody knows about it. Thank you. So over to you, uh, Claire, Claire, I think. Oh, me. Oh, me. sorry, me. Alexander. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, two members of our team uh, on the road today traveling and uh, um, so I will now will be will try to channel Katya, uh, okay. who um, brought this topic through our discussions and uh, uh, everything we will share now it's the the result of uh, an ongoing conversation that we had between ourselves and meditations and the topics each of us presented something that was really dear to our heart. So the Next uh, focus of importance, as we see it, is the our discipleship responsibility. And when we th think about responsibility, it's rather as a two words. It's responsibility. So how do we develop our capacity to respond to that crisis we see around us and how we develop that capacity to serve the needs of the world. And so we all in a way are privileged to have access to knowledge that been given to the world through the ageless wisdom teachings. And there is large volume of knowledge that is very practical, but it's still not being put in the practical, uh, into the use. And so there are number of groups around the world who's been practicing different techniques and working to apply esoteric knowledge to everyday use. And, and so we see the importance of our collective focus on the shift from knowledge to the practice. It's about going from the vision to capacity. 
and that's what we planning to bring forward through our program that's there would be unfolding programs that would allow us to share with each other those jewels of practical knowledge that could be applied for this service to all the living beings and the entire planet. Over to you, Claire. Right relationship. The um, unfolding world crisis is a call for humanity to focus on establishing right relations across all aspects of human endeavor between individuals, communities, nations, and all kingdoms of nature. Right relationship with others comes into its fullest expression when we are also in right relationship with ourselves. This implies recognizing and healing our own wounds and welcoming the challenges that come with standing in the transformative fire of love. With the Aries full moon marking the beginning of the new spiritual year, this is a potent time for review on every level. Here in New Zealand, our nation is in mourning as we come to terms with Friday's attack by a lone gunman on two of our Christchurch mosques while Muslim worshippers were gathered for their lunchtime prayers. 50 people lost their lives and many others were injured, nine of whom remain in a critical condition in hospital. On the same day, our young ones led the world in a lineup of countries whose children were marching for climate justice. These events are not separate Though they may appear on the surface to be independent of each other, they, they are inextricably linked. In Esoteric Psychology 2, we read, the true server will be distinguished as might be expected by the quality of harmlessness and by an act of refraining from those acts and that speech which might hurt or cause any misunderstanding. By no word, suggestion, implication, innuendo or voice dissatisfaction will he hurt his group. You will note that I do not say will not hurt any individual. Those working under the law of service need no reminder not to hurt any individual. They often need, under the exuberance of spiritual stimulation and the intensity of their aspiration, to be reminded rather to demonstrate group harmlessness. So, a few hours ago, I was blessed to see these tenets beautifully expressed through tender and powerful action. I joined in a silent procession with Dunedin University staff, students and their families. We walked together from the campus down to Dunedin Stadium. Thousands gathered there for a vigil to acknowledge, grieve and honour those who lost their lives in last Friday's massacre in Christchurch. 50 tall white candles were lit, one for each person who died in their mosque that day. At 7.50, there was a call to prayer that was both powerful and exquisite. I feel sure that that invocation, along with the voices of all who sang or spoke or were silent, traveled far beyond the confines of that stadium, reverberating around our city and out into the wilder world. We are one, was the message, let there be peace let there be peace. It was deeply affecting to witness leaders from many religious traditions flanking each other on the stage. A mirror image of the community gathered together on the rugby turf and in seats around the stadium. People brought candles, children played together while their parents sat shoulder to shoulder in vigil and quiet. Multiple languages were spoken, amongst these Arabic, Maori, 
Hebrew, English and Sign Language, which is New Zealand's third official national language. There is something profoundly moving and eloquent about sign language. Its silence and full embodiment supports the idea that true gentleness and compassion are great strengths. All of us are being invited into a process of radical self-inquiry and contemplation again of what it means to practice harmlessness. We are very grateful to our Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern who is modelling to us all what true leadership looks like. Alexander is going to post to the chat box a link to a wonderful compilation on the subject of harmlessness um, that you can explore in your own time. I just want to share also the mantra of the true of the world, um, the group of world servers. May the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. And may we fulfill our part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech. Thank you. Wendy. Yes, thank you. So beautiful, inspiring deeply meaningful uh, words. I, I would like to actually build on that by talking about the concept of service. Many of us probably think of service as um, uh, something that we, we might do with a certain organization that needs uh, a volunteers or something like that. But uh, from the point of view of the um, 2025 initiative and for all of those pe for those people who are students of um, the uh, ongoing work of um, meditation it is it can be something even more than that in the work of the 2025 initiative, um, the concept of service of both individuals and groups, it's, it's always been paramount. In fact, the mission of this initiative is based on the concept of participants coming together once a month to share and to discuss spiritually oriented topics with the intention that through this sharing we all may grow in greater awareness. The concept of the one life is intrinsic to this program and from its beginning in 2012 the initiative has sought to address important aspects involving the problems and challenges of humanity. One continually emerging question raised is the following. How can humanity make the needed changes in consciousness that will support the betterment of our planet. From this question, a growing understanding has arisen through the emergence of a new concept of service. Throughout the works of Alice Bailey and others, Master DK has shared this new concept of service one that calls all of humanity to embark on a conscious understanding of true service. In fact, the service of the new age requires a deep look into our own thoughts, feelings, and behaviors 
with the idea that true transformation emerges when we look within. And as we dare to observe the thoughts that continue to live in our subconscious, we can begin the process of transformation and true alignment with our soul. Through this process, our eyes begin to open to the true global view that we, as all beings on this planet, are one. Master DK tells us that this process is already happening, but there is still more to be done. Humankind must become gradually more aligned to the oneness of life. True service requires that we recognize this global oneness, that we consciously take charge of our global vision and do the necessary inner work that we each are responsible for. So this year's focus that we want to bring forward is its focus on the topic of service. What does its service mean? How does service change in the modern environment? What is our individual service? What is our group service? What is our world service? Following the cycles of the crosses, astrological crosses, we will bring uh, focus to three topics through the science of the cardinal cross to the topic of the vision of the plan. Through the science of the fixed cross to the topic of the discipleship responsibility, going from the vision to capacity. And through the science of the mutable cross we will reflect and meditate and work around the topics related to right relationships. In the handout section of the control panel, you can see and download our year program and our year note that we want to offer to the group for this work, for this year. So now I will pass microphone to Renee to tell us about our program and then to um, we'll go one by one. Thank you. So we will begin with the cardinal cross, which is concerned by the vision of the plan. So in the first sign, Aries, we will be focusing the vision of the plan to navigate the crisis of our days. In Cancer, the theme will be from planning the plan to the manifestation of the light of the house. In Libra, the theme will be the choice is the deepest manifestation of one's value. Turning from the unreal to the real. 
And in Capricorn, the role of the world servers group, which is radiating the light as a united group. Thank you. In the science of the fixed cross, we will focus on the topic of discipleship and group work. In Taurus, we will be focusing on the question of coming from the vision to capacity. And we will invite everyone to reflect on the question, how do we develop capacity to manifest the vision? In the sign of Leo, we will focus on the topic of the fires of group work and the group work, loss of the group work in general. In Scorpio, we will invite you to reflect on the theme of purification of own nature, kneeling to lift the hydra. In Aquarius, topic of service is the effect of the contact with the soul. Developing own toolbox to see and meet one's brother's real needs. Over to you, Claire. Um, in the Mutable Cross, we'll be focusing on right relations. So firstly, in Gemini, We'll explore what it means to expand our capacity for service, putting our capacities into active um, service to manifest right relationships. Um, this will also be expressed during a conference in June, in June 15th and 16th. Uh, in Virgo, our focus will be on right relationships with our planet and all kingdoms of nature. In Sagittarius, we will focus on recognizing our oneness and on ways in which we can foster and create unity. And in Pisces, our focus will be on the transformative fire of love. I want to bring one cor uh, correction. Uh, there is never perfection in the in, in the form, so that's why we continue experimenting with finding the best forms to express that meaning that we have to express. In the plan, there is a, a mistake that I see that for the cancer, probably you notice that uh, it should be from vision of the plan to manifestation of the lighted house. Uh, please forgive us. We will correct it, and on our website, it will be the right one. Mm -hmm. Um, this are the topics would be the focus for the uh, full moon webinars. But as you know, besides the full moon uh, uh, cycle, there are other cycles that we follow and we invite you to follow. Fol uh, following the cycle of the new moon, we invite your uh, attention and your meditative focus to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And this um, became a project of its own, uh, almost an initiative uh, within initiative. And um, I want to invite uh, Rebecca Hood from Australia to share with us about uh, our plan uh, of work within this project. So I will um, unmute Rebecca now as soon as I find you on the list. Okay, please unmute yourself. Hello. Thanks, Good Alexander. Morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as you always say. Um, yeah, so as Alexander has said, we're using the seeding point just after the new moon to concentrate 
on how the plan can be manifested um, through the sustainable development goals of the UN. And um, this relates to what was said before about focusing on how we can support the needed changes in consciousness to, to be able to um, move forward and solve the problems of humanity or progress. Um, so we focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and um, Martha recently described them as the greatest collective achievement having taken place within the United Nations. And as such, with the United Nations being the forum of, of international relations um, worldwide, um, the, U, the Sustainable Development Goals really represent a significant achievement for humanity as a whole and an important step in the unfoldment of the plan. And this relates to the idea that was presented before that there is a plan and perhaps not every one in humanity can relate to the idea of the hierarchy and the plan, but the sustainable development goals provide um, a way to relate to the idea that we can have a plan to, to work through the problems that we have. So our work focusing on the SDGs is one of supporting and strengthening a shared vision and that relates to the oneness that was spoken about. Um, a shared vision of formulated thought forms of solution to address the many issues facing humanity and the planet. Um, so it's about recognising the crisis and so supporting the recognition of the crisis but um, through our meditation work it's about making energy available um, for, for the goals and for the thinking and the ability to become receptive to the vision and to receive the solutions and that's sort of setting that energy free to amongst humanity to, to be able to um, have that energy available for the goals. And as has already been said, with this Aries new moon coming up, we're inaugurating another cycle. And this will be the third 17 month cycle of meditation on the sustainable development goals. And we'll continue our experiment that has developed in this field of building a synthetic group field, working with the triangle of focalizers for each webinar and encouraging every participant to voice into the circle during the webinar. Um, we've been finding that that has been very powerful so far, um, really bringing people into the circle. So please join us for our, our Aries New Moon webinar, um, 2 p.m. New York time on the 6th of April, and we will be meditating in support of goal one, no poverty. And so you can register for that on the 2025 homepage, um, or you may receive a link if you're subscribed to that cycle. Um, the, just to let you know that the link on the cycles page isn't working at the moment, so it's good to go to the homepage and register from there if you would like to join us in building that group field and making that energy available. Thank you. And thank you, Rebecca, for continuous work of focalizing this uh, important work and uh, takes a lot of effort and deep gratitude. And I would add one more thing that um, we are looking for uh, presenters who could join the focalizing triangles uh, at each uh, New Moon webinar. And so if you uh, any of the goals that you see in this in our program uh, is dear to your heart. Please contact us. Let us know, and um, that work that work that we see of real importance, and your help and contribution would be 
uh, much appreciated. And going forward with our year program, there are another cycle uh, that we've been following and inviting you to meditate with us. It's a cycle of equinoxes and solstices. And uh, today, uh, the full moon uh, very close to the equinox. So that's uh, the March equinox. It's time when we usually present our year program. And so that's uh, what's happening now um, because there will be another uh, Aries new, uh, full moon. And uh, um, but through the cycle, we bring usually the uh, focus to the astrological significances that are available now, and bringing collective focus to the level of identification with our planet and our collective journey through the solar system and through our neighborhood cosmos and so i invite antonella to sh share about the coming uh, solstice webinars yes thank you yeah. alexander yeah yes it has been some solstices now that uh, uh, we uh, focus on the general cycles of the of our solar system um, pointing to 2025 and so each solstice is like to sound a note, a unison note, um, along the cardinal cross potency. We know that from esoteric astrology that the cardinal cross is uh, bringing into the planetary system the energy, the cosmic energy, decay says. And so to focus each solstice, which is like a spine in the cycle of the Earth around the Sun, is like to hold this sphere and um, um, to it's like to align um, above and below uh, heaven and Earth. So we know that uh, in these four. Uh, cornerstones of the cycle uh, of the earth which is like an, an eye an individual and when we see the earth uh, turning around the sun which is like the group the the center of the solar group so is the we uh, we have these four moments where this unity and communion between the individual earth and the solar group can happen so so equinoxes and solstices are really the four moments where the cross of the heart of the planetary logos can really release um, its power and also its potential to imitate the higher model which is the solar system or the cosmic system so in in the last solstices we after this um, overview of the main um, signs of the heavens then we have uh, been focusing um, on the plan on the possibility to um, ground this plan following this march of the planets around the sun so in order to imitate the model and to yeah to project the solar plan into the planetary plan into the human evolutionary plan and um, and so also the next solstice we go on with this story with this uh, uh, carving a path uh, from the solar plan to the planetary plan and this year um, a group of people which is uh, which has been working on this imitating the September model of the solar system uh, will present um, a 
pattern, a model uh, called lambdoma from the lambda, the letter, Greek lambda letter, um, which is um, a, to present a thought form for the new culture and civilization. So we, um, a thought form uh, structure and systemic was uh, thought and is, it has been sown uh, regularly following the signs of the heaven. So we will present in group at, se at the September this thought form. This is the plan for the next solstice. Thank you. Thank you, Antonella. And um, this year, uh, as you probably know, is a special year in a way um, it's uh, a year uh, of the seven where the seven year cycle uh, comes to its peak and it's uh, the year of the festival week of the new group of world servers so in addition to all our regular cycles that we observe each year this year will have a big program during the festival week uh, during the seven days uh, December 21st to December 28th um, we didn't start preparing the we didn't finalize let's put it that way this program yet we started preparing it already and um, we not sure yet how it's uh, what form what shape what format it will take but um, when we worked seven years ago in, uh, during the festival week in 2012, we had two webinars a day that people in different time zones could uh, join meditations on uh, different topics because the energy of the festival week is really unique and that's the energy that allows us to align with uh, the vision of the plan. And in a way, work during the seven days of the festival week, it's work of sitting the next seven years uh, ahead of us. And uh, all the program that we shared with you today, in a way, it's uh, preparing us, focusing us on uh, the work that will be happening during that week and um, besides our programs there are uh, many other groups and initiatives who were with whom we work together preparing for this great event and uh, one of the greatest tasks for us now is to realize our world service group unity that we would come together as one group working together during the festival week and uh, we invite you to tune uh, with as many different events that will be happening this year both online and offline whenever you can go attend the meetings and the conferences meeting other people's linking heart to heart directly that when we come to the time of the festival week we could keep our connection as vibrant as possible. Yesterday was the first meeting of the new initiative, the Silent Circle Initiative. That is the result of cooperation of many groups coming together in the realization of the importance of this time and the importance of this opportunity of the festival week and this silent circles will come together during 
cardinal points of the year. Yesterday was the meeting in the March equinox. The next meeting will be in Cancer uh, solstice, then at the Libra equinox, and then at December solstice, right at the beginning of the festival week. So if you're interested to learn more about that, uh, this new initiative, write to us, um, subscribe to the new mailing list, that we could all work together, different groups joining our efforts. As I said, there are many different initiatives that prepare us to that important event. Another initiative I want to mention is the uh, weekly silent, 10 minutes of silence every Thursday. Five, 10 minutes before five o'clock in your time zone Align with the new group of world servers, realizing it as a one united living being. It tuning in silence and sounding the mantra of the new group of world servers after that. Another initiative that's um, I want to invite Dot to share about. It's about the. Let Dot you tell us about this. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, can you also unmute Wendy Thompson? Yes. Thank you. So this initiative is. The Silent Minute, Solstice 2019, a call to all people of goodwill. And uh, many of us are familiar with the Silent Minute that was utilized during the World War from <clears throat> 1940 to 44. Uh, briefly, in 1917, on a battlefield just outside Jerusalem, Wellesley Tudor Pohl was uh, next to one of his uh, military soldier friends, colleagues, and this person said to Tudor Pohl, I've had a vision, I'm not going to make it through the battle tomorrow. You are. So please, there are millions like me who will be on from the other side. Lend us a moment each day. Through your silence, give us an opportunity. The power of silence is greater than you know. So what has been inspired uh, through uh, uh, actually three groups is this silent minute at 9 p.m. on solstice, December solstice 2019. It wasn't until 1940 that Tudor Pohl, when the Blitzkrieg uh, was hitting London, when he realized to do this and he went to the BBC and Churchill supported this and Big Ben would sound the bell at one minute prior to 9 p.m. GMT, London, uh, London time. And for one minute, Brits land, sea and air held silence. At the end of the war, uh, a uh, Nazi official was interrogated about why he thought Germany had lost the war. And he replied, you had a secret weapon for which we could find no countermeasure, which we did not understand, but it was very powerful. It was associated with the striking of the Big Ben each evening. I believe you called it the silent minute. So it seems to us, those of us who are working with this initiative now, as the response has been so positive, as we announce it now at this ARIES webinar, at this first uh, point for us in this year, as Antonella just described, uh, this will be an opportunity uh, for millions and millions around the world to come together uh, for a silent minute. Wendy? So the silent minute will be preceded by the ringing of bells. So people will do it individually um, throughout the world. And we see this ringing of the bells as being multifaceted. 
It's a call to stillness and silence. It's a sounding of a note and it's a summons to recalibration. So silent thought is said to penetrate to the center of our cosmic foundation, which is called the bell. And Mount Kailash in the Himalayas is called the mountain of the bell. Mount Kailash is also known as Mount Meru and is said to be the spiritual center of the universe, the axis of the world. And within every human, there's a center in the brain which is called the bell. And like a resonator, it's said that this center gathers the symphony of the world and transforms the deepest silence into a thundering chord. What we're looking at in relation to the silent minute at the beginning of the festival week, the new group of world servers, is this alignment and identification through the ringing and sounding of the bells um, all the way from the cosmic foundation through um, the mountain of the bell on the planet and through the bell in every human vessel. And if we imagine that kind of ringing through the cosmos, the possibility of everybody doing that in the same minute, it has profound um, possibilities. So this ringing of the bell expresses humanity's yearning, intent and declaration to fulfill its destiny as an inhabitant within the cosmos. Thank you. Thank you. As we prepare for the twenty year twenty twenty five, the year where when is the great decision will be taken at the centennial conclave in the hierarchy. And at that time, the preparedness of humanity will be assessed, preparedness for the reappearance of the Christ and externalization of the hierarchy. So we have this less than seven years before that. And this year, it's a year where we can come together, meditate during the festival week, precipitating the impulse that will stimulate the entire world group, new group of world servers, not just as a terrorist, but the world group in its entirety. That's the movement that could start as the result of that, could really shift the humanity to that state of preparedness that would be seen for the hierarchy. So we call in everyone to listen to the need and listen to the coming opportunities which are massive and the further we go the more it will be unfolding through this retreat we uncovered so many we brought so many ideas that we just don't have capacity to implement and we hear that there's so many ideas in the air that other groups now precipitating and we all in a way lacking capacity to do that I'm really grateful to the three groups that came together bringing this solstice, December solstice initiatives 
uh, silent initiative forward. It's a beautiful example of what is really there looking to manifest. So let's do it together. Over to you, Daniela. Thank you. Um, so this is um, about the vision I was blessed to see in a meditation um, during um, first during the Christmas uh, esoteric advent this past Christmas and. Um, the vision got expanded and uh, confirmed throughout our different meditations and exchanges. And um, so I'll transmit it to you as I saw it. Um, um, what I saw is, um, is a structure, a geometrical structure, resembling um, a flower maybe. And it could be that I the the best way to describe it is a multi-layered lotus flower um i see it as a blue light the petals are blue light and um everything is moving all the petals are moving and um positioned on them i see um points of light there are also beings <clears throat> that are on the tip of the petals as well and then these points of lights that light that are be positioned on different petals and changing petals and and everything is moving and what i hear or there is this very strong impression that i get the sense of i, I heard say this is it forces of light are being positioned and you with them and the you is the plural one it it, it addresses all servers all the workers uh, so that's it this is the the the, the vision that um um, Alexander beautifully um, formulated into together we are participating in a challenging and majestic planetary process the dynamic unfoldment of the new world mandala each of us is finding our unique purpose and place of responsibility in relation to manifesting the vision for the new civilization. Thank you. Over to you, Wendy. And so we will now move into med uh, meditation. I would like to first of all let you uh, let you know what uh, has been chosen for the seed thought, and um, then we will go into the meditation itself. And um, of course, when we get to the place where we can focus on the seed thought, I will say it again. So the seed thought is: I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. Uh, we will begin with an alignment, bringing, observing the physical body, bringing it into a place of quietness.
and then aligning the etheric body. The astral, the emotional body, observing our emotions and bringing them into a quietude. And finally, aligning our mental body, our, our thoughts. Knowing that we can let them go now as we go into meditation and come back to them later. Now we bring it begin the alignment process of the triple personality. First, the physical aspect, the emotional aspect, calming our emotions, our mental aspect, Focusing now on the soul. And holding the intention that the personality bodies are now coming into alignment with the soul. And now we identify as the soul. I am the soul, the soul am I. And from our identification as the soul, we extend this identification to the new group of world servers who links humanity and hierarchy. We are members of the new group of world servers. And as a group, we project a line of light towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the planetary heart. And we visualize our alignment reaching into and up to the ashrams of the masters. and the Christ at the heart of the hierarchy. Together we affirm the sons and daughters of humanity are one and we are one with them. We seek to love, not hate. We seek to serve, not exact due service. We seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain be, bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events. 
and bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all hum of humanity love. And from the seed thought, we will meditate on the aspect of the divine plan who now seeks to manifest owing to the inflow of the energies of the zodiac sun in which we now stand. Our seed thought is I slept and dreamed that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. And we move into meditation.
precipitation using the creative meditation visualize these energies pouring and anchoring upon the earth reinforcing the light the love and the will for the service of the good And together we affirm, in the center of all love we stand. From that center, we the souls return outward. From that center, we the ones who serve will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in our hearts, through the groups and throughout the world. in relation to our understanding and to the responsibilities that we need to assume, let us visualize the work to be done now in our life environment to contribute to the advancement of the divine plan. distribution while saying the great invocation let us visualize the light love and will to good from the spiritual hierarchy pouring through the five planetary inlets london darjeeling new york geneva and tokyo irradiating the consciousness of the whole human race. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the points of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Oh.
Let's just hold this space of silence for a moment. Thank you very much for joining us today. The energy of the full moon will be available for us for another day. So let's keep our meditative focus together, meditative tension. We don't have time today for our regular sharing This Saturday, there will be a follow-up meeting after the silent circle gathering that I mentioned it happened yesterday, where we invite everyone to come share impressions of the joint world group work during the five days of the full moon. So if you will have a chance, please join that meeting. It's not organized by the 2025 initiative. It's a, a meeting of the new initiative. It will be at 7 p.m. GMT, London time. It's 3 p.m. Eastern time in New York. Uh, the registration information is available in the chat window now. So we could share some of our impressions from today's meditation there as well. And uh, we would appreciate hearing your thoughts and feedback via email. And coming up next, as we start our new cycle, we continue our work and our next webinar has been already announced, as Rebecca said, it will be on the April 6th, it will be Aries New Moon uh, webinar focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number one, no poverty. And again, we're looking for focalizers. So if you're interested to focalize this webinar or to be one of the focalizers of the triangle of focalizers for this webinar or any other 17 goals, please let, let us know. And on April 20, the second area solar festival, our guest will be Martin Buick. He will open our program this year, working with the energies of the Cardinal Cross and focus on the vision and the plan. And the topic of this webinar will be areas design of beginnings. At least that's a work title for the presentation, as Martin said, so it might change a little bit. And one last thing I want to say that's the 2025 coordination group um, needs some assistance, uh, time and some uh, legwork, so to speak. So if you have some time available, Please let us know and we would appreciate your assistance. Thank you. Over to you, Daniela. Thank you. So we will be closing today with um, the affirmation of the disciple. We are a point of light within a greater light. 
we are a strand of loving energy within the stream of love divine. We are a point of sacrificial fire focused within the fiery will of God and thus we stand. We are a way by which man may achieve. We are a source of strength enabling them to stand. We are a beam of light shining upon their way and thus we stand. And standing thus revolve and tread this way the ways of men and know the ways of God and thus we stand. muted.